But first, as today's news poll suggests, it seems that the more Australians learn about the proposed Indigenous voice, the less they like it. News poll today had support for the voice down to 36%. Now, that's a whopping 24 percentage points fall from the high of 60% support for it back in February. When it comes to the voice, I suspect that a lot of Australians are a bit like Kamal. The Aussie icon was initially a no, then he was a yes, after he received a visit from two yes campaigners, and he is now a no again, having thought about it for 48 hours. First he was an uninformed no, then he was a semi-informed yes, and now he's a fully informed no, as he told the project last night. Here he is. No is an informed decision. Uh, the yes, the first no was an uninformed decision, and then a yes was a semi-informed decision. And now, 100 percent, I am well and truly uh, committed to saying no. The problem is, as Kamal said, is that the voice is about race, and race shouldn't be in our constitution. It will be, if you do the voice this way, it becomes a racist issue. You're putting a whole race of people uh, separate from the rest of the country. So much for the Kamal momentum that the Prime Minister had detected a bit earlier. Something I get great heart from is the decision of Kamal, a very courageous decision. He's someone who came out and said no and went away, spoke to people, read what it was about, read the question and decided that he would come out and declare his support for yes and to say why would anyone oppose this. So we have now a, a new term that we've coined today, Kamal Mentum, in the last couple of weeks. That was the Prime Minister there on Saturday and of course on Sunday Kamal had changed his mind. Mind you, the pushback Kamal got from the project team on TV last night is typically, typically akin to the moral scorn that the Yes Camp directs at people who don't agree. We're originally saying no, and then you went to yes. So I, are you back on no? Just you're saying that now your decision is, is fully informed. I'm just, I think we're all interested to understand not, no, no, not, not how fully, you landed no. on this position. No, 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 no. Kamal, wouldn't a voice, though, give these First Nations people access to policy makers? Isn't it fair that uh, Indigenous people have a say on policies that are affecting them? I don't know whether they have a common voice as a Indigenous people. That's what Maybe. the voice is about. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that lack of understanding yeah, but, but, of Indigenous no, no, people no, no. mean yeah, yeah. that there should be okay. a reason to have a voice so that they can express okay. their experiences, their life, and have policy that is made around their individual experience yeah, because there are a lot of people that don't understand that? Now, that's not what struck me most about the exchange last night. It was the on-air fact-checking of Kamal's statement in that exchange that there's around $40 billion a year of Indigenous spending that might have misled the viewers into thinking Kamal had a $40 billion figure and that was way off the mark. At the moment, it's $40 billion a year. $40 billion a year. What, what is? The, for, to the Indigenous people. Where is the money going to? What Hang are on. they doing where, with it? We're sorry, where are you getting that figure from, Kamal? A bigger pun? Where's that figure come from? The 40 billion? Yeah. Where, wh I, I saw it and, you know, somebody told me, maybe, I, I think I'm making it up. They're spending 40 billion dollars. How are they spending that money? Kamal, obviously grateful to have you on. I feel we should probably just fact check the 40 billion figure because you've used it a few times and I know a lot of people are listening to you. I think there was a claim made by Tony Abbott some years ago that the National Indigenous Australians Agency spent $30 billion a year. Um, that's been fact-checked as false. The government agency says it's never administered funding of $30 billion a year on Indigenous programs. Its total budget for 2022 and 23 was $4.5 billion. So I think it's probably just right, given that we are in a referendum and people are making up our mind, their minds, uh, that we, we just get that right. Well, you know, I mean, uh, we can split the difference. But the fact is, sorry, uh, Kamal, there's a big difference between four billion and no, 40 no, no, billion. no. Uh, that's, okay, I made a mistake. Okay. 
Now, he says 40 billion, Kamal says 40 billion, that's what's spent on Aboriginal people. And the project hosts, well, they did a good job of trying to verbal him into thinking that his macro $40 billion budget number was somehow related to Canberra's National Indigenous Agency. That's what I, he, he didn't say that, they said that. In fact, he was talking about overall budget numbers. Every dollar that governments around the country spend on Aboriginal people. And the truth is, Kamal was right. Taxpayers do spend around $40 billion a year on Aboriginal Australians. Kamal was right, and here's the evidence to prove it. The 2017 Indigenous Expenditure Report from the Productivity Commission. That's the federal government's own Productivity Commission. And here's the key points. It says, in the 2015-16 financial year, Total direct government expenditure on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians was estimated to be $33.4 billion. It says in 2015-16, the estimated direct expenditure per person was 44,886 for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians, which is around twice the rate for non-Indigenous Australians. Average government expenditure on Aboriginal people is roughly double the community average because Aboriginal people have higher representations in general welfare programs. And then there's all the specific Indigenous programs run by state and federal governments, such as the four and a half billion spent by the National Indigenous Australians Agency. Now, adjusting the 2016 figure in the Productivity Commission's report for inflation, well, that gives us now a figure of $39.5 billion in Aboriginal spending today. So Kamal last night on the project was actually spot on with his $40 billion figure. Now, like so much of the voice debate, much of the commentary is at best misleading, at worst deceptive and bullying. That's why even left-leaning Facebook had to walk back its fact-checking claim that the Uluru statement was just one page not a 26-page statement of claim against the Australian people. Now, the polls might be encouraging, but the fight to keep our constitution colourblind is far from over, especially given the walls to wall advertising from the cashed-up Yes camp and the moral intimidation from them as well. There's the danger of poll-induced complacency as well. Now, please, if you want to keep our Constitution colourblind, don't let anything stop you voting no. Let's leave the last word with Kamal. Indigenous people need help. It, by making them a separate race from Australia, that's, that, that, that's not acceptable. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a no from me, a no from me, period.